or Pasifika. Reverend Rosetti Imo, the Australian High Commissioner to Samoa, Your Excellency Emily Luck, the Regional Coordinator for the Pacific Islands Rural and Agricultural Stimulus Facility, or PIRAS, Mrs. Tamara Nicotine, our partners and stakeholders of our agriculture and fisheries sector, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Minister of Agriculture and Fisheries, Honorable Laulia Malietoa Lewotea Polotai Valfosi, it is an honor to welcome you all to the official launch of Samoa's component of the Pacific Islands Rural and Agriculture Stimulus Facility, PIRAS. Now, Samoa is founded on God, and it is therefore most appropriate to begin our formalities this morning with prayer. And I'm hum humbled to invite Reverend Imo to beseech God for his blessings on this special occasion. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, the living God, creator and sustainer of all life, we are gathered here for a special purpose to help our communities. But we begin with worship to exalt thee. We ask for the presence of your Holy Spirit so we may conduct our worship in truth and honesty. In and through the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Our Bible reading this morning, according to the International Bible Reading Association, or the IPRA lectionary, is from the Old Testament. The book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 8. I shall read verses 13 and 14 from the New International Version Bible Translation. Let us hear the word of God. The Lord Almighty is the one you are to regard as holy. He is the one you are to fear. He is the one you are to dread. And he will be a sanctuary. But for both houses of Israel, he will be a stone that causes men to stumble and a rock that makes them fall. And for the people of Jerusalem, he will be a trap and a snare. May God bless the reading of the Bible and may he enlighten unto us the deeper meaning of his holy word. I have chosen the main text for a short meditation. Isaiah chapter 8 from parts of verse 13 and 14, and it reads, The Lord Almighty is holy. He is the one you fear and the one you dread, and he will be your sanctuary. But for Israel, he will be a stone that causes men to fall, causes men to stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. The theme for today, according to the IPRA lectionary, is a stumbling stone. 
We read from Isaiah warnings from God to Israel and those that resided in Jerusalem about 700 years before Christ was born. The Israelites have rejected God's repeated calls to repent from sin and return to him. In sharp contrast, those like Isaiah who fear and remain in God's light will find sanctuary in God's love and grace. They often find God transforms circumstances in their favor, that God will be with them in their times of need. Brothers and sisters in Christ, that is the message for us today. Our God is the ever-present God. He has been with us since the beginning of time. The Israelites, during the time of Isaiah, forgot about his presence, and they continued to live in the darkness of sin. They stumbled and they fell. We are also reminded by the scriptures that even when we are drowning in sin, if we call out to God and we turn to him, he will save us and provide to us a sanctuary. When we repent, God renews our relationship with him. We are witnesses this morning in this ceremony of some of this transformation. Through the kindness and goodwill of Samoa's development partners and our neighbors, we should continue to give glory to God. Our, God, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is the prime example of God's sanctuary. He was our salvation on the cross. His victorious resurrection has given us a pathway to, inter to eternal life if we remain faithful and believe in him. Unto God be all honor and praise. Amen. Let us bow our heads and continue with a prayer of thanksgiving, <coughs> confession, and intercession. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, blessed Redeemer, creator of heaven and earth and all that dwell therein, we are grateful and humbled by the blessings you continue to provide for us. Thank you for the protection provided to us as we rested in the past night. This morning, you have renewed our strength and we are inspired to continue with our work. We thank you for this opportunity to learn more of your will as we strive to follow the path you have laid for each of us. We have been blessed with many gifts, and this morning, we are witnesses to works of your grace through our international community and our government. Gracious God, thank you for the Bible that guides us in these testing times. We thank you for the presence of your Holy Spirit that strengthens and provides hope in our times of need. Most of all, we are thankful for the sacrifice Jesus Christ, our Savior, made on the cross. Merciful Father, we are not perfect. We pray for your forgiveness, for we are sinners. At times, we forget our calling and become complacent in our faith. May the blood of Jesus Christ cleanse and purify us so we can once again be on the righteous path with you, our God. Loving Father, we pray for your grace and blessings upon this gathering this morning. We pray for, we pray for your blessings upon Samoa's development partners, our neighbors and friends, who have contributed for the betterment of our agricultural communities. We also pray for strength, guidance, and vision as we execute plans under this stimulus. So we pray, Holy Spirit, lead us as we continue with this work. We pray and remember our world as we struggle to come to terms with the impact of COVID-19 
on people and economies. We pray for our country, Samoa, and all its leaders. <coughs> Grant them wisdom and foresight for the good of Samoa. Bless all of Samoa's developments in the sea and on our lands and all our people. These are our prayers, Lord. Together with the silent prayers of our hearts, we offer them all unto you so that your will be done. In and through the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. May the peace, love, and fellowship of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon us all and all God's children in the world, now and forevermore. Amen. Ia olea wa te ailangi le fa polo ma le fa sangi e pe ona sau ni el sunga le fa fia ngai ngam. Ia eleisha ngatonu a e ole te talo e sang fa manui le tua i tiu te mga luenga a wa le tua malona finangalo. Ole te minei o te wala o te wai ma le ngam fa lo o te le ilau fiong el minsta mo lau sau no ngau tu. It is now my great honor to invite the Honorable Minister of Agriculture and Fisheries for his keynote address. Lau fio. Manatua lewa maiana mamoni la palapa malo tato sula le tua malo na lofa fa salafa ona wetato wa ufanga poto poto le ne yaso ya mamoni le nganga fa aftai fa popo ila sunga te ita yo saninga. ว่าเลยดีเลยเลยล้านนุ่งเลยล็อกฟอร์เลยทัวร์คนอุ้มไฟฟ้าตัวนุ่งในฟ้ามวยมวยตาอัวตาตัวฟ้าตาเสียในย
tools and equipment has increased in therefore affecting agriculture productions and productivity. The government of Samoa of the day have now recognized the importance of agriculture as the backbone and in inclusive economy, and such as a means of enhancing an economic resilience of all our citizenship. The pandemic has increased awareness of the important role of domestic food system plays in providing resilience to stock, self-sufficient and insurance against food security. These mutual concerns for rapidly recovered from the pandemic effects provide an opportunity for Samoan government and its development partner to work together. Strengthening the resilience of domestic food system for long-term sustainability. This regional initiative through the PIRAS is timely as we focus into the region shift from insulations ourselves from the pandemic towards the economy recovery and resilience building. I wish to acknowledge the steadfast support of the International Food of Agriculture Development, IFAD, and the Government of Australia for partnering, partnering with our government in this initiative. The Paris project comes to critical time to component government effort in creating new and sustainable existing livelihood for those severe impact by the effect of the pandemic. In any crisis, as you usually vulnerable sections of our community who are badly affected for this reason, the Pirates Project will target women and youth farmers in rural areas in Samoa. Pirates complaints of the Government Economic Recovery Initiative by targeting those communities who have seen the most vulnerable. With the technical support of our non-government organization, Farm Association and our scientific research organization of Samoa, as well as other agents of our government, Pirates will support rural farmers through providing farmers with seedings, planting materials for crops, livestock and fisheries, providing tools, farming equipment and training to improve farm productivity providing food processing technology and training to support post-harvest handling, food preservation and value editing, establishing nursery and demonstration plots, providing trainings for farmers in COP and Ireland hastily practice and in caging, expanding of the use of mobile application amongst farmers as minimum shared market related information as well as creating awareness of issue and event. I am very pleased to note that the data capture for the knowledge of sharing is also at the core of Paris. This will be driven by the regional coordinator unit pace out of IFAD in Fiji, whose primary shall shall and engage in partnership and ensure utilization of driver data to collect and fed into the country level activities. And these activities, in turn, generated quality data to outreach and targeting, as well as verify process of data. Finally, the counterstone of this initiative is to develop sustaining, strong partnership in various areas. Partnership in the community level, where peer learning will be encouraging partnership at the enterprise of level of rural farmers and private sector partnership. At the agency coordination and level between government and non-government actors, including the private sector and the partnership of the strategy level between government and the development partners. As the COVID-19 pandemic has caught us, it is the only through the hardness of our effort to collective as one we do have the great chance to migrating a negative impact from pandemic recovered, the loss that we have gone for the past two years, which building the resilient system and provide more sustainable livelihood for our people and our future. Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, 
it is my pleasure to officially launch the Pacific Island Rural and Agriculture Stimulus Facility in Samoa and look forward to support all the stakeholders and past partners present here today in our successful implementation. So if what? Ya, ultimanatu oleh tato lau ngau tu nan yaso. Oleh mafu anga oleh tato potpoto, ya oleh tato teleno oleh ile anga tonu oleh o mai o fa manyanga mol tato watunu, a tato fengai ya mamaf tiang ol covid. Ile to tato fa teleno ol tato watunu ol me o tato wo yai me o malava ile lua ela sa vali tolo tau sanga o afia sa moa i me umma. Ia ai pitu isili ai lava o na afia umma le tunu atoa mai lava a tumtumunga i nuu mai tumalo e ka desia e o fori ta tumalo o fe lava lu ta fa yoi a afia tele ai fa toanga la fumano fa inga faiva o a ta to mai ta wina le anganga ma afia tele o ta to tunu Ai le fai titi ai le nga ngafa fai il ai fe le o tato ma futa fi fi ai ma le fiong ai le ai kom si na Australia e ma tato pat pat tele mole. Your Excellency Emily Luck la o bil marito. Thank you for your assistance and your continuous support for Samoa. I'm sure the eight uh, eight hundred million, or 800,000 American would be able to support our farmers, mainly women and the youth. And more than half of the time in Australia, on our farm in Moe, who are more than half of the time in Australia, or the half of the time in the world, and the half of the time in the world, and the half of the time in the world, Mae tasi lafa alfa moe moe o le talo pelea i na ia mwhaina maua le so soani moe la tau e sili na manau mia. Pe o na ia ilfa mafanga o le tato wa wunanga o le itu pao tina a me se fo itu pula matala vau ia malvae nga fo i o tu pao ta maa. Pa o la valeo la utu talo a fa i e maua fa manianga nei i auto wa lo fangia i e fao nga malita tau. Ina ifa tau nu wale manu lauti na la ina mai fa mo mo ngene nei mai le um mai fo i no le lava la pi pi i pe a ve malo Australia ifa wau poloketi nei no sili nei le fa lulungon tanga luenga ifa mai one off ya tato talo le tu tato pot poto fo ifa penit tau sang fo tu tu fani malo fo fa wau ya ifu al men na ilunga le tu el watu le li poti monitoring report. Ia sahaja tahu nu ulai, faman yang aku tahu ni lah faman yang ini le. So, ia waktu ini ngan faham tay, ia lalat atau potu potu mai dene ia so nul faham tahu ni nul faham mui mui ulai ayat, ia lo fangi le tua ia faham ngan tahu ni seleni buat atau mua, awal faham tahu ni nul hati na ini nul hati nu, mai wong atu sa umane fu fuanga ia malaman ulai ti ulai tu lai mai ulai atau faham ngan malu fau. E fa mua mua ati nae i nuu mafi anga. Ia manuiel tato mafi tangal ni aso, so i fuoma i manuiel. Ma lo faftai lo fiong minsta mo le saunonga malama lama, wo palela e i aile le au fia. Ma ma tau te talo, ia sangfa manuiel tu e tiu te manga luenga lo fianga e mala wa fionga, a wale manuiel sa moa. Thank you very much, Honourable Minister, for your keynote address. It is now my honour to invite the Australian Commissioner to sa moa, Your Excellency Emily La, for your remarks. Reverend Imo. Minister of Agriculture and Fisheries, Lauli Ale Mali Eatoa, CEOs, distinguished guests, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. Talo Falava. I'm very pleased to be here today at the launch of the Pacific Islands Rural and Agricultural <coughs> Stimulus Facility, Pyrrhus, in Samoa. 
and maybe we call it Pyrus. I think we'll call it Pyrus. Um, Australia is proud to partner with the International Fund for Agricultural Development, or IFID, and the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries to help vulnerable farming households in line with the priorities of the Samoan government. Australia's support to the agricultural sector seeks to improve the livelihoods and climate resilience of smallholder farmers in the Pacific. As the Minister has said, we all know the devastating impact this pandemic has had on people's health, livelihoods and food security. Australia has worked to provide a range of assistance to support Samoa in its COVID-19 response and recovery. This includes, to date, 10.5 million Australian dollars in supplementary budget support provided to the Samoan government in addition to our bilateral program. Strengthening household resilience and food security through the distribution of seedlings and backyard gardening support in collaboration with NOLA and the Women in Business Development Initiative under Australia's humanitarian partnership. Supporting Samoa's COVID-19 vaccination program through the donation of 50,000 Australian made AstraZeneca vaccines in addition to our COVAX funding together with other partners. Partnering with UNICEF to support the Better Brains, Better Future for Samoa program, focusing on health, good health, nutrition and security for early childhood development. After all, they're our future. Our missions in Fiji, Vanuatu, Solomon Islands and Tonga have also been busy implementing Australia's <coughs> Partnerships for Recovery strategy launched in early 2020 to support partner nations throughout the pandemic. We believe this program, Pyrus, will render much needed assistance to vulnerable farmers and producers, as the Minister noted. Pyrus will help thousands of Samoan farmers to improve the production and sale of nutritious local food, as well as to help them add value through food processing and preservation techniques. This support will also decrease Samoa's reliability on importing fresh produce, leading to stronger health outcomes and boosting economic recovery. Pyrus complements our work already underway in Samoa through PESA Plus and the Pacific Horticulture and Agriculture Market Access, or Pharma Plus program. Recently, Pharma Plus worked with the Samoan and Australian governments to open an export pathway for fresh taro. This means Samoa will now be able to trade this important crop to Australia, pending exporters' compliance with agreed controls. Following a recent announcement just last week, Carver growers across the Pacific will, will now benefit from the launch of the Australian government's Carver pilot program, providing direct access to the Australian market. This is in recognition of the cultural importance of kava, or of course ava in Samoa, in traditional ceremony, directly benefiting the some 75,000 Samoans living in, Sa living in Australia. This past Monday night, I hosted a reception to mark 50 years of, of, of Samoa-Australia diplomatic relations. Our agricultural links span these decades and more and I'm proud to see our engagement in this space increasing in support of Samoa's economic recovery and future stability. I would like to take this opportunity to thank the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries, the International Fund for Agriculture Development and the local implementing partners for your collaboration on this important project. Thank you, Your Excellency, for your remarks. I now invite the Regional Coordinator for the Pacific Islands Rural and Agriculture Stimulus Facility, Piras, 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 Mrs. Tamara Nicodem, Nicodem, for your remarks on behalf of the International Fund for Agricultural Development, IFAD, uh, via Zoom link from Fiji. Mrs. Nicodem, over to you. Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to represent the International Fund for Agricultural Development at the launch of the SIDCA 
rural and agricultural students facility in Tamar. As you know, IFAD is an international financial institution and the United Nations specialized agency based in Rome, in the UN's food and agriculture hub. IFAD invests in rural people, empowering them to reduce poverty, increase food security, improve nutrition, and strengthen resilience. Since 1978, we have provided over $23 billion US dollars in grants and low interest loans in projects that have reached more than 520 million people over the world. We work where poverty and hunger are deepest in the most remote regions of developing countries and in fragile situations. Small scale agriculture is central to our development model. Agriculture is a proven engine for quality reduction and economic growth. GDP growth generated by agriculture is more effective in reducing poverty than growth in any other sector. IFAD supported projects has shown that through access to finance, access to markets, and improved access to technology and information, rural people can lift themselves out of poverty. IFAD promotes gender equality and inclusiveness, builds the capacity of local organizations and communities, and strengthens its resilience to climate change. We have been active in the Pacific for almost 40 years, since our first project in Samoa in 1981. IFAD has worked with Pacific governments, regional and international partners, and Pacific Island communities to support rural livelihoods increase household incomes, and strengthen community resilience. We support in the region the unique rural development challenges of small island development states, with a particular emphasis on community-driven development, climate-smart and nutrition-sensitive agriculture, and support for market linkages and value chain development. Today we're launching PIRAS, the Pacific Islands Rural and Agricultural Stimulus Facility, a regional initiative supported by the Australian government and by IFAD through the Mountain Donor COVID-19 Rural Poor Stimulus Facility. The initiative aims to support economic recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic across the Pacific to improve the income generation, food security and nutrition for rural communities in Fiji, Samoa, Tonga, Vanuatu, and Solomon Islands. It aims to reach a total of 20,000 households across the Pacific countries and 3,500 beneficiaries in Samoa, 50% of whom are women and 40% women. These are expected to benefit from improved nutritious local food production, better food preservation, safer post harvest planting, and access to local markets. In closing, I would like to extend my appreciation to the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries for organizing this launch. Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your attention. Thank you, uh, Mrs. Nicodem, for your remarks, and please uh, stay safe from the COVID-19 virus. Uh, Your Excellency and Mrs. Nicodine, as Reverend Imo prayed and fully promoted by the Honorable Minister, we will continue to pray, pray and pray for God's rich blessings on Australia and IFAD, and in return, some financial blessings uh, for us to continue with our agriculture uh, development. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to the end of our official formalities.